order to attract research funding to our academic medical center and to our medical school, we have to first recruit the best and brightest physicians and scientists. Then we need to support those individuals with state-of-the-art facilities and with funding that allows them to get started, that allows them to do some early experiments and generate data that gives the investigator the ability to determine what is the most promising approach to answering a question or dealing with a particular problem. HW generously provided to um, me on behalf of MCW a grant of five million dollars that originally was planned for a five-year time period. That grant will be extended a bit because of the pandemic. Uh, the grant happened to be hit by the pandemic in the early years, and so uh, HW has fortunately given us an extension in order to uh, use the money for the best possible purposes. Once we had our research strategic plan mapped out, we needed to work on it from several different points of view. We needed to increase the likely success rate of our investigators for securing national funding when they apply for it. This funding is made available to researchers who have already submitted an application to a federal or other major funding agency. And they got back reviews from the funding agency. And in the case of some investigators, the reviews told them that they were competitive for funding but not competitive enough to make the cut. And usually the reviews give the investigators an idea of what additional preliminary data they need in order to make their application competitive enough to be funded upon resubmission. So we allow the investigators to uh, conduct some additional preliminary experiments in order to generate the data needed to have a successful resubmission of a promising application. So the research in my lab, we really use developmental biology as a window to explore disease. And so the basis of that is really the processes that happen to make an organ are often the processes that then go awry when disease happens. So we try to look at those foundational mechanisms so that we can then apply them to diseases, including cancer. And so we believe that by understanding those basic mechanisms that make an organ, so for example, how a stomach is made, can then be applied to understanding gastric cancer. This research is important because, for example, with gastric cancer, it's a very devastating disease. The five-year survival rate is less than 20%. It's really important to focus on foundational, fundamental, basic science in order to drive healthcare breakthroughs. I would say that if you looked through the history of the most innovative healthcare breakthroughs that have happened, they've all started in basic science labs studying very fundamental questions. A research grant starts with a good idea and the team. And so together we think about that idea, we think about what we need to do to um, put together a can clear and concise and compelling document grant that would convince reviewers that this science is impactful, it's significant, and that it is feasible, that we um, have the right resources and we are the right people to carry out that work. Most grants that are put in don't succeed the first time around. And so some of the obstacles we face in um, the first round of the grant process is having enough data to support the idea as, we're, as a, an idea that we should pursue, an idea that NIH should put their money into. Is it significant enough? Is it impactful enough? Is it innovative enough? And is there solid footing 
that the review panel can believe that this question can be answerable and that the answer will be impactful. Grant applications are important because you won't receive funding from a national funding source if you don't apply. And also, funding the, the best and biggest grant uh, funders, mostly the federal government, provide our investigators with feedback on the research that they're planning to do. And the feedback is often invaluable to the investigators in allowing them to craft the best possible experiments and strategy in order to answer a given scientific question. In terms of intermediate outcomes, our benchmarks would be mostly aligned with research funding from external sources. For the first grant, we went in and the review panel liked it. They liked the idea, but they wanted a little more data to convince them. They wanted a little more data to convince them that um, the hypothesis we had was worth pursuing. And then there were some key sort of very cutting edge, technologically advanced experiments that we wanted to do, and they wanted some proof that we could do it. And so um, that's what we had to do. We had to get together as a team and find ways to generate that data so that we could go in on a second round and succeed. The AHW funding was really essential to the success of my grant proposal. The first time around, we needed data. We didn't necessarily have the funds for that data gathering. Uh, so the money we received from HW supported our ability to do some cutting edge, really um, novel work to show the feasibility to the study panel, to show that we could do the work and that there was actually an exciting and interesting phenotype or effect coming out from the interventions we were doing. So really that money was the um, fuel to allow us to um, bring the data together that we needed to succeed. So happily, uh, we did receive the grant. After that um, nice funding from HW, we were able to succeed. We were able to give the data that was needed. And now we're building the team. So right now we are hiring. Uh, some, we're looking to add trainees to our team. And we are working on pursuing that project, which is about stomach development and understanding how the acid producing cells of the stomach are formed because we know that loss of those cells is very detrimental to stomach health and it leads to gastric cancer eventually.